A Lincoln County senior who was hurt in a car crash a couple weeks ago has now died. Coming up, we'll show you how his classmates are now helping his family. When this intersection opened two days ago, the state said it didn't need a traffic light. We'll show you what happened to change their mind. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. A Lexington Elementary School went on alert this afternoon after a reported shooting near the school. Police say they were called out to Eastland Parkway just up from New Circle Road just after 2. That's not far from Yates Elementary. The all clear has been given at the school, but the shooting investigation continues. Our Garrett Weimer is live for us on the scene with the breaking details. Garrett? Yes, it's a confusing situation for police and a scary one for parents. That reported shooting uh, put a nearby school on heightened alert as police searched for not only the shooter, but also the victim. Police say they were called uh, around 2.15 to the Parkway Center Plaza. Witnesses said they heard shots and saw someone down in the parking lot. But when police got here, they say the victim was gone. I'm not sure why he ran off. Uh, we're really concerned with his well-being. Uh, we're hoping that maybe somebody could help us locate him so we could get him any help that he needs. A school district spokesperson says Yates Elementary was on heightened alert and it held its walker, walkers and car riders, making parents go into the school to pick them up. We are told that buses were allowed to leave, however. Uh, as for the investigation here, police say they really don't have that much information since they weren't able to talk to the victim. And yes, they are still looking for the shooter. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. Grief counselors were at a Central Kentucky high school today helping students cope with the death of a classmate. Ricardo Nunez, a student at Lincoln County High School, was a passenger in a car that crashed in Knoxville, Tennessee on Labor Day. Nunez died yesterday. WKYT's Mark Barber is in Stanford with more on how he's being remembered. It's our top story at five. The senior was well known and well loved here at Lincoln High. To remember the teenager who school leaders say brought so much life into the school, they started off classes today with a moment of silence. We would like to go ahead and just take a moment of silence. That moment of silence was filled with prayers and tears for Ricardo Nunez and his family. The 18 year old died yesterday afternoon. Friends of the senior at Lincoln County High had been praying for him since Labor Day, which is when he was hurt in a car crash in Knoxville. Police say he was sleeping in the back seat when the car ran off the road and crashed, throwing him from the car. He was a good student and an athlete, but those who knew him say, more importantly, he was a man of character. There are just some people that, that you meet and they brighten up a room and Ricardo was one of them. Uh, he, you know, made everybody smile and he was very much admired by his peers and the faculty. While they were hoping he'd make a recovery, some of the school sports teams joined hands to pray for the Nunez family. His younger brother is on the high school basketball team. School leaders tell us during this difficult time, the entire school has been coming together to show the family they are loved. We had our volleyball team actually donate their entire uh, concession money to Ricardo's family. The fundraisers by students and teachers here at the high school have raised about $1,500 for the Nunez family. In Lincoln County, Mark Barber, WKYT. And an online fundraiser by the Church of the Nazarene in Stanford has raised more than $1,600 for the Nunez family as well. After a series of crashes on a new stretch of road in Lexington, the Transportation Cabinet has approved a stoplight for the intersection there. Police say there have already been five crashes at Citation Boulevard and Greendale Road since Monday, including one last night that sent a woman to the hospital. WKYT's Victor Puente has reaction from drivers about this new traffic signal. A state spokesperson said their traffic projections indicated there was no need for a signal at this intersection. But after two days and multiple crashes, that is changing. This crash last night was the fifth at the intersection of Citation and Greendale. At that point, the road had barely been open a full day. Neighbors say they could hear the crashes one after the other. I hadn't actually been on uh, citation to check it out, 
And the reason I was surprised was because there's no traffic light. And as you see, this is a very wide section. Cars turning left off of Greendale were going into the paths of drivers on citation. Those drivers weren't required to stop. The mess led to a big response for the area's city council member. You know, still we're only at 48 hours or so since the road has been opened. Um, and it has been pretty constant. Um, emails, phone calls to my office in my cell. But because the roads are maintained by the state, the city couldn't make that change, although they had officers at the intersection in an attempt to slow drivers down. This morning, the transportation cabinet said they had heard those concerns. Due to accidents, traffic flow, and also to the geometry of the intersection, and we will be installing a signal as soon as possible. Of course, the accidents were a factor, but um, the vocal residents who you know, took their time out of their day to email and, and fight for this light or to be commended to. Lacey told me they didn't have an exact timeline for when that signal would go up, but she said the work for it would begin as soon as possible. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. So until that light goes up, there will be no left turns off of either road. Anyone approaching the citation intersection from Greendale will only be able to turn right. More events are planned to help a teenager who was seriously injured in a car accident. Our county by county coverage begins in Bath County. 16 year old Aaron Williams was injured last weekend in Bath County. His family says Aaron is starting to show small signs of progress, but he still has a long way to go. Starting tonight, friends and family will be selling t shirts in his honor at Fusion Fitness. There's also a benefit dinner at Jefferson Community Park on Friday night. In Barron County, the trial date has been set for a man charged in connection with the death of a two year old girl. Anthony Barber will go on trial in April of next year in Barron County. He's charged with murder, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with physical evidence in the death of Laney Wallace. The toddler went missing back in May. Her body was found in a well six days later. Barber's attorneys say that they may ask for a change of venue for that trial. Fall is officially here. It's off to a nice start out there, but what does it mean for our weekend? No, many people have plans this weekend. WKYT's Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here to fill us in. Chris? Yeah, it's all eyes on the East Coast, guys. Big area of low pressure. A couple of them actually coming together now to try to throw rain against the grain and toward the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Current winds continue, at least upstairs, coming from the northwest here across the Bluegrass State. Look at how fast those winds are cranking here across the mid Atlantic states. That's a big time rain. Maker flooding rains likely from these two areas of low pressure. Satellites showing clouds that are beginning to pick up steam now, and eventually that's going to lift its way back to the northwest. Defender across central and eastern Kentucky, as of now, nothing that is going on. So that is uh, welcome news if you got anything planned outdoors on this Wednesday evening. A little bit of cloud cover out there, but overall things are going to remain fairly on the dry side as we go through not only this evening, but right on through the overnight. If you are uh, heading to a high school football game this weekend, we've got a good shot for at least some rain showers coming in. We'll update that coming up here in uh, a little later on. Rain chances will indeed be on the increase as we make our way into the coming weekend. And by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, could get a little soggy into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. Guys, we need the rain. That's actually a good thing. We'll track it with a new hour by hour forecast just ahead. Thank you, Chris. It was very impressive. Washington, D.C., rolling out the red carpet today to welcome Pope Francis. He visited the White House, greeted the faithful from his Pope Mobile, and is scheduled to celebrate an open air mass before 25,000 followers. Greg Boswell has the latest from Washington, D.C. Thousands cheered wildly as Pope Francis rolled through the streets of the nation's capital. Francis is known as the People's Pope, and he lived up to that today, stopping the parade several times to kiss children. It was wonderful. It was great to see him. Yeah, and when he looked at us, it was like really nice. We just love Pope Francis for his message that he's been sending to the people, to the Catholic Church. Later at St. Matthew's Cathedral, the Pope outlined his vision for the church in the U.S. to bishops. He gave them specific guidance on the controversial issue of Latin immigrants. He said, perhaps it will not be easy for you to look into their soul. Perhaps you will be challenged by their diversity. But know that they also possess resources meant to be shared, so do not be afraid to welcome them. 
The Pope's first full day in the U.S. began at the White House, where another large crowd gathered on the South Lawn. Good morning. Speaking in English, Pope Francis called for protection of religious liberties and commended President Obama for his initiatives to reduce air pollution. We are living at a critical moment of history. The president thanked the pope for his leadership. Your holiness, in your words and deeds, you set a profound moral example. The pope speaks to Congress tomorrow. The widely anticipated address is expected to once again touch on the hot-button immigration issue. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. As you might imagine, security for the Pope is massive, but somehow a five-year-old little girl got past a security barrier and at the parade.